Good evening, everybody. We are about to start week two of 669 Children's Health. So let's see what's in store for this week. Hopefully you have kept up on the announcement boards so you know that my request is for um, group leaders to uh, assign particular pieces to each member of the group um, for you to submit. However, I want only one document. So I don't want every member of the group submitting a separate piece. It's going to be the group leader's obligation. All members send the group leader what they write and she will submit it with um, that person's name next to the section that they did so that I can ensure that everyone is participating um, in a collaborative manner to do these assignments. There are only three group assignments for this course. And let's see, I'm going to start grading your papers tomorrow. So let's see how that goes. Uh, this is week two, so I'm going to go to week two, and let's see. We start with our um, weekly inspiration, as we do um, in each module. And in this particular week, we're going to talk about eating disorders, uh, substance abuse, and mental health issues in children. And it's important to recognize these early on. Uh, mental health is an essential part of children's overall health, health. And it is imperative that during those annual physicals that um, components of mental health be addressed. And part of this goes along with ensuring that you are doing a good behavioral and physical developmental uh, assessment on your patients. Uh, when they're younger, you're going to be doing it sooner. But as they get older, children typically come in for that annual visit and you can see that when they make these big changes that there may be some drastic uh, changes in behavior from one year to the next so it's the healthcare professionals responsibility to ensure that they're addressing those issues um, everyday stresses and even subtle ones can cause changes in child's behavior like moving uh, new siblings going to a new school um, all of those things can cause temporary acting out. Uh, warning signs of more serious problems include um, issues at school, at home, uh, with peers, changes in appetite, sleep, or daily routines, social withdrawal, or fear of things that they were not previously afraid of. So all of a sudden they don't want to go to piano lessons anymore, or they don't want to go to... Um, play soccer. Other, other signs you'll see is a regression to behaviors uh, more common in younger children like bedwetting, uh, signs of being upset such as sadness, tearfulness, and crying, self-destructive behavior. We see, we're seeing this much more often now in those um, early and mid-teen years with uh, people hurting themselves with head banging, cutting, self-mutilation, uh, repeated thoughts of suicide or death. Now to diagnose mental health problems, providers must talk to both the child and the parent to examine a myriad of behaviors and symptoms, uh, the medical history, developmental and family history. And, and we also, you know, nowadays children have such um, contact with social media and the effects of social media can be debilitating, um, bully, and it can and it promotes bullying behaviors. So we really need to be cognizant of these things. And as healthcare providers, we need to be the one that will take that bold step and approach it. So if we see signs that are going on, uh, sometimes parents see those signs also, but maybe they're are afraid of overreacting or they're afraid that um, they're seeing something that's not really there. Well, as a healthcare provider, it's our responsibility to address these things and then either have uh, the, the behavior explained away or find some help for uh, the children or the family. 
So these are your objectives and the readings that are provided and then that we're going to go to our week two case study discussion. So here is our first case study and this is Kyle. He's a 13 year old boy coming to his pediatric office for a same day appointment and he arrives with his mother who is quite tearful. She tells you that Kyle is having a hard time at school and he's a freshman in high school. He doesn't have any chronic medical history. He has a younger brother and sister and during this past summer vacation, he did not spend much time with his friends and preferred to sit in his room and play video games. Very isolating behavior. Since the school year started, he appears to be more withdrawn and his grades are poor. He's coming home with mostly D's when he was an A and B student in middle school. After some further questioning with his mother, with the mother in the room, she states that she and her husband got divorced over the summer and the family is adjusting to the change. The kids spend most of the time with mom and every other weekend with dad. So there you go. There's that big red flag. So let's look at these questions. Uh, these are the questions that you're going to split up amongst your group members. And if there is an extra question, then that one question will be done in a collaborative manner. Once that is uh, submitted, it is the student's responsibility to post two response posts by day seven. I look very closely at grammar and sentence structure as masters prepared uh, advanced practice nurses. You need to have a good command of how to write a proper uh, paper and a proper posting. So I look at those things. And that's really all we have up for this week. So you're going to have three posts. The first one is going to be submitted by your group leader. The group leader is going to designate who did what section. If there's an extra question, all members of the group will collaborate to answer that question. That will be posted. Then you will be responding to other people's posts over the next few days. So this needs to be done by day three, which is Wednesday. And I have that all spelled out for you on the calendar if you have any questions. So I hope you have a good rest of the week. I'm sure you're all anxious for me to get through those papers, but it takes me a little time uh, using due diligence to ensure that I am reading each paper. Since you put so much time and effort into them, you deserve for me to give you my time and effort to ensure that I am um, grading them well. So have a good evening. Good night.